Welcome to the Steady Anchor Podcast, a podcast in Christian faith and practice, highlighting doctrine and discipleship in the local church. This is episode five, episode five on discipleship and community. Hi, my name is Luke. I'm your host. You can find us on social media and whatnot. Today, we're going to get into deeper into why discipleship is important and how discipleship is done in the Christian context. Today, we're going to be talking specifically about why uh, why it's necessary for believers to have other believers they can communicate with, how we can build off of one another in the Christian church, how we can build one another up, what that really looks like for, for people to go in as equals. Today, um, I am joined by my roommate, Nick. Say hi, Nick. Hi, I'm Nick. Hi, that's Nick. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so just to recap, uh, I don't know if I've done like a... I think I've introduced myself kind of in given detail before, but... Just to recap, I'm uh, I'm Luke. I'm 20 years old. I'm a Bible college student, originally from Joliet, Illinois, and currently a uh, intern at a local church, studying to become a pastor and then go plant a church eventually. Uh, and Nick, tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, my name is Nick. I am also 20. Unfortunately, I am Luke's roommate this wow. year. Ah, uh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, originally, but my parents moved to. Arizona this past September. Arizona, so literally across the country. The other side of the, the other. I, I was like Arizona's west. It's closer to the university I attend. No, it's literally twice as far. Twenty six hours. Six hours. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am a sophomore or a junior. Junior this year. Um, I'm studying youth ministry with a minor in both Greek and Hebrew. Um, I don't know what I want to do when I graduate. <laughs> I've been kind of wrestling with this call to youth ministry, but lately um, I've been feeling more called towards church planting. Um, so trying to navigate what that looks like. Do I need to be a youth pastor at a church plant? Do I need to just be a discipleship pastor? Who knows? Only God knows. Um, fun fact about me, I am black, white, and Asian, and people tend to call me a panda. It's it's great it's fantastic <laughs> it's a it's a delightful aesthetic <laughs> it is and delightful. we appreciate it <laughs> anyway so today uh nick and i are going to be talking about what discipleship means in community uh what the context is of like so the two of us as roommates this is our second year living together unfortunately and, well hey <laughs> our third <laughs> shut up our third year as friends so like my freshman year nick was my neighbor just across the hall shut up <laughs> And like we've been neighbors, we're not neighbors, we've been roommates these last two years. And so what does Christian discipleship look like as peers? Um, so discipleship most often would probably be phrased in terms of like mentorship. You think of discipleship as usually an older Christian who's coming beside a younger Christian to kind of lead them and train them up in the faith. Uh, but Christian discipleship also takes the form of building up as equals. So Nick and I being the same age, the same position in life, uh, somewhat different places in our walks, uh, just through life experiences and these different things, uh, we're coming together as Christian brothers, um, as, as two young men who are learning to serve the Lord well, who are hopefully going into ministry full time, where uh, we have our specific calling and our specific gifting, and us as roommates, hopefully, We'll be able to, to benefit one another, to mm -hmm. help one another grow in a relationship with Christ. Um, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Nick, what can you tell us about communal discipleship? What does it entail? Yeah, um, so when it comes to mentorship, like we talked about briefly before, like you start to think of uh, Paul and Timothy, like you think of an older person coming alongside a younger person, like Luke mentioned. But when it comes to um, like a communal discipleship, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's doing life together as many churches and many Christian circles like to say. Mm. Um, but it's more than just like we're doing life together. It's just like, what, like, what does that look like? Like what, what is our purpose as Christians figuring this out together? Yeah. Um, we're not just lounging around being bros. Yeah, but we, we're have, not just... <laughs> we have intentions in this. We yeah. have goals that yeah. are, that are definitive. Yeah, for sure. So like, I know that Luke has read more than I have. I know that Luke has listened to an extensive amount of podcasts. It's all that I do. It's all, and he <laughs> plays Minecraft and listens to podcasts. It's a good time. <laughs> it's a great time for him. Um, but I know that when I have a question about something, 
I can ask Luke. And, you know, like I can ask my older mentor too, but the unique thing about Luke and myself is that we're both in a similar position uh, where he's able to speak into it from a different angle, but still a similar angle, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, so because we have this similarity, like in our age, um, and we're close friends, it's comfortable for me to talk to him about things that I'm g- going through and things that I'm dealing with because he himself may be going through something similar or mm-hmm. has been through something similar. Yeah. So we're not, we're not disparaging on that mentorship relationship. We think that's incredibly important. Mm-hmm. Nick and I are both interning at churches, involved in a local church. Uh, we have older men and mentors in our life that we can look up to and go to these things, ask these difficult questions and work through these. Um, it's incredibly important to look for a more experienced uh, person in the faith who you can learn from and walk after. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll be doing an episode on that again in the near future. But right now, just in this context, we want to highlight that it's also good and important for us as Christians to find peers, people our own age, who can share these experiences and be able to walk through them together, to think about these things, to dialogue about them, to to just have a true and genuine friendship. So that like, you know, as the Proverbs speak of iron sharpening iron as one man sharpens another. And we'll talk more about that later, but we want to to make that distinction that that Christian discipleship also includes true and genuine friendship. So next we'll also be talking about some of the different things that entails, for instance, accountability. Uh, Nick, what does accountability and communal discipleship look like? It looks a little different. Um, So like with accountability, it's like you ask yourself, like, well, you ask your friend, hey, how are you doing? And then everyone typically is like, oh, I'm fine. And they yeah. just keep going. Like, no, you're not fine. And you know you're not fine. Because <laughs> it's, it's so easy <laughs> it's in the so church. Easy, it's just so easy. Like, like, yeah, I'm good. It's it's okay. Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. It's, 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 it's not <laughs> fine. And you know it's not fine. <laughs> Sometimes you're not fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's You need okay. to admit that you're not fine. It's fine to be not fine. Mm. Um, and, and I really think one of the beautiful things about a deep friendship with someone your age is that they understand when you're not fine. Mm -hmm. Like other, some older people, like you say, I'm fine. Like, Oh, okay. But if Luke was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, yeah, I know you're not fine because (laughs) I'm not fine. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and, and I just know that about him. So, and especially living in such close quarters. And I mean, for people who aren't living together, people not in the college context, it may look different, but still in the Christian community, you should be living in, in such a way with such close relationships that you'll be able to tell when, when things are different, when uh, someone's responding negatively or differently than they normally would, when someone's normal patterns are being disturbed, when they're exhibiting anxiety or, or uh, distress, discomfort, even anger, uh, when those things aren't normal. Mm-hmm. Part of living in Christian community isn't just dismissing those things, but it's it's actually caring that something's not right with your friend, that your brother in Christ is struggling with something. Um, and living in close proximity, especially us as roommate, facilitates that well. So that, you know, when we have, uh, when one of us is in the apartment all day, kind of cooped up, keeping to ourselves, trying to be just kind of shut in, it, it's kind of a, a red flag that, okay, you know, they don't want to interact with people. Maybe something went wrong in a class or something's going wrong at home or mm-hmm. whatever else it may be. Maybe problems with relationships or with other friendships. Um, but that's, that again, that's just part of Christian relationship is that we can't ignore those warning signs that yeah. we need to be actively thinking about, okay, is this something that we need to address? Is it a problem that might uh, work itself out in its own? Or is this something that we need uh, spiritual counsel for? Is it something that I need to be praying for them about? Uh, and that's another big part. Nick, uh, how is it that Christian community and discipleship means praying for one another? It means like sitting beside your bro and saying, hey, I'm here to pray for you. And then not just being that everyday Christian person like, oh, I'm praying for you, but actually mm-hmm. pray with them, um, praying with them for their struggles, praying with them uh, to praise God together, praying with them to thank God for the relationship that you have with one another. And I think one, one of the really cool things that me and Luke were able to do a lot last year, and 
hopefully more so this year was mm -hmm. praying together as roommates uh, with all four of us, just like praying together. I put, we would all go to bed, um, opening up about like, hey, like I'm struggling with this in my family, or I'm struggling with this in my relationship with my significant other, or just I feel uncomfortable, or just you know everything's going pretty well, and you know I pray that my focus wouldn't be on that things are just going well, but that I would continue to keep my eyes focused on. God and everything he has done for me and his message of redemption mm -hmm. um, it comes to uniting ourselves together as brothers in Christ and praying for one another so that our focuses can be more aligned with the Father's focuses mm -hmm. yeah it goes beyond just praying for the surface level things and uh, when we're living in community with one another when we're having these meaningful relationships it means having genuine concerns that uh, we as Christians realize that we can't deal with this on our own, that our mm -hmm. our strength and security is in Christ, that he is the source of our hope and our strength of our faith, of our security, that all these things. And that's that's the reason why this is called the Steady Anchor Podcast, because Christ is our sure and steady anchor. He is the hope that has gone before us. And, and so we want to be able, through prayer and through these conversations, to continue to point one another to Christ. Not only to urge one another to prayer, to be, but to be actively praying for one another, um, and and that means being honest with yourself and with your yeah. friends. That uh, when something is going wrong, then you don't have to bear that burden on your own. That part of Christian community means being able to share the difficulties and the struggles of life with the people around you, and that trusting the people around you to pray, to to intercede for you, to bring uh, your difficulties to the Father and try and ask and intercede for you as seeking for help, trusting that prayer actually matters. You know, mm -hmm. a Christian community should always be a praying community. And especially in the context of, of such an intimate relationship, we should definitely be actively seeking to look out for one another's spiritual health, for whatever family or financial needs, whatever uh, relational difficulties are going on, we should be praying for one another and praying for one each other often. And that goes with this idea that we as Christians are called to bear one another's burdens. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, how can we as Christians do that? How can we act out uh, this kind of sacrificial living that we help one another, come alongside one another? I mean, it's just like you said, it goes down to like being sacrificial. It means doing things that are uncomfortable for us and maybe inconvenience uh, for me to like be able to come alongside you and help you and to encourage you and to be present. Um, it's sort of this idea of like we have to suffer with one, one another. So when you are struggling with something, either in your home or with your family, um, that looks like me coming alongside you and helping you, walking with you. And like we use these terms, but it means just like being present. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it even means just being silent and just sitting with you. Um, I keep thinking about the example in Job uh, when his friends are just like berating him over and over and over. Just like, oh, you must have some sin. Yeah. Um, but before that, you see like they just showed up and they were just silent and sitting with him. Yeah. And that's an important part of, of that context of like, you know, the, the, the tradition of the Hebrew people that when a death would occur, a tragedy would occur... They would just come to the person's house and just sit with them. Sometimes it may just be in silence and uh, in mourning or of weeping. And we see in the New Testament context, maybe they would tear their clothes and throw ashes. But it would be an important presence that bearing one another's burdens goes beyond, oh, well, I'll send them a condolence card. <laughs> but that you're actually, you're there beside them. That uh, even though they may not need to say something or they may not need to ask for something but the presence of others is is hugely important and beneficial for healing and for dealing with these difficulties that uh, just to be a presence in in the context of a loss or a, or a difficulty is how that we help one another pull through yeah. and, and empathy of course is a huge part of this you mm -hmm. know uh the, uh, Paul gives the example of the body of Christ being like a, this human body, that we are all different parts, all connected and unified by one head, but at the same time, 
Um, when one part of the body hurts, it affects every other part of the body. You know, if I if I slam my hand in a car door, my heart's going to beat faster. My blood's going to rush to my head. I'm going to feel the jitters throughout the rest of my body, because with this connectedness, with uh, us as God created us as relational beings, that when we when we see each other in pain, in suffering, it sometimes it's our response to not want to deal with that. You know, like there are times when uh, when we see someone who is struggling, who is maybe crying, maybe dealing with difficult situations, and we may be inclined, we may have this temptation to say, well, that's their problem or uh, or that, that that doesn't that doesn't affect me. That's not my business or uh, I have something else to do. I don't have the emotional baggage. You know, I don't have the I don't really have the time to help them deal with that right now. But being in Christian community means weeping with those who weep. Mm -hmm. It means uh, having this empathetic spirit where when your brother in Christ or sister in Christ is hurting, that you're there to hurt with them. Or vice versa. It's like you may have the the temptation to just go up and just start like spouting like a bunch of different things that you've heard on TED Talks or whatever to just try to like encourage someone and be like, oh, you know, this thing is probably happening because of this or this thing is happening because of this or... Blah, blah, blah. And maybe sometimes they just need someone to just sit with them and yeah. listen. I've learned that listening to other people and just being present speaks more than any words I could ever think of. And when I'm struggling with like, okay, I don't know how to encourage them. Sometimes they're just like, I just want you to be present. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I just want you to be here with me and to just yeah. suffer with me. Yeah. Yeah. That living together sometimes means, uh, it just means being around, being available, so that even when people don't need something, that you're just there because you care. Like, you know, we want to avoid transactional relationships where you give me something and I'll give you something and back and forth and back and forth. But we just want to be there for the sake of being there, mm-hmm. especially in those times of suffering, but also in those times of joy. No, the, yeah. the same verse that uh, the same passage that speaks of weep with those who weep also says rejoice with those who rejoice. That we as Christians, in our empathy, should be able to to rejoice with people when they hear good news. That uh, when things are going well for you, my brother in Christ, what, uh, when you're excelling in classes, when your relationships are going well, when things are good with your family, I should be able to be happy for you. Not envious or jealous in some way or indifferent just because, well, that's your life. I don't really care. It doesn't affect me. But that when things are going well for you, I'm thankful to God that things are going well for you. And that it brightens my day to to see your brother in Christ or sister in Christ celebrating good news should drive you to celebrate as well. I know that's easier said than done, too, because I know that there are plenty of times when I've been jealous of you for, like, getting a 100 <laughs> on, on your Greek test, and I get, like, a 94, and I'm like, Gah! Like, I knew it was accusative masculine singular, but I put neuter, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's okay because Luke's my friend and I love him. Yes, yeah. and the opposite happens fairly often as well. Mm-hmm. Like you definitely the first exegesis paper you did better than I, and another shut up, <laughs> <laughs> and and stuff like that. But because we care about one another, because yeah. our relationship matters beyond just, uh, it's beyond just two guys who live together. Yeah, it's beyond just two classmates who study together. But that, uh we as members of the church of christ are in the same family that we have a an eternal connection a tech a connection that transcends these earthly categories so that we have we have this bond that actually means something and actually matters so that even the insignificant things are not insignificant when yeah. it comes to these relationships that you know in the family of god we don't uh we don't dismiss the small things that uh we care. We we care about the details. We care about the minutia of everyday life, um, and so we want to to be there, bearing one another's burdens through all of that. Uh, but it also means part of accountability means being able to confront one another in sin. Yeah. And so, Nick, how in in Christian community, how is it important for peers to go to one another and seek reconciliation through correction? How important? That's like. That's like necessary. Like, like yeah. I, I don't think you can be living in obedience to God while 
hiding your sin because then you're living in disobedience to God. Yeah. Because God has called us to do life together. He's called us to share our sins publicly with our church body, with Mm -hmm. our fellowship of believers. Um, Sometimes one person may catch another person in the act of sinning. And I know that those things are very difficult and very challenging, but a lot of it too is you may not get caught and that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You, you need to be in prayer about it. And I pray that the Holy spirit would convict you of that causing you to approach your brother and sister and, in Christ because you recognize that you need help. You recognize that you need redemption and you need that reconciliation between you and God. And if you sinned against someone else, you need that reconciliation between you and that other person. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to confronting sin, I, I, I know that Luke and I have been in this weird, (laughs) (laughs) in this weird agreement, uh, called a slap bet, which is basically like, if he does something, I get to slap him across the face with my big, meaty cello playing hands. And if I do something, he gets to slap me in the face with his big, meaty hand, his big sausage fingers. My big sausage fingers. <laughs> and so that's kind of a joking way to deal with these things. But in all honesty, uh, being able to to enter into agreements, to uh, to actively seek to hold one another accountable mm-hmm. for sin and for holiness... That's an important part of Christian community. You know, I, I've been in conflicts with people before where uh, I've talked about the need to, to go to one another in, in the Christian faith and to correct one another, to say, what, well, what you're doing isn't right. It's not honoring to God. Mm-hmm. And they've come back to me, some people outside the Christian faith and some people who do call themselves Christians, and said, well, how? that's not loving. That's not what Jesus would have done. He wouldn't have called you out for your sin. He wouldn't have condemned you. Or... Except for when he would have. <laughs> Except for when he would have. Except right. for what he did in the Bible <laughs> multiple times. Multiple times. <laughs> but you see, you know, I remember one person specifically was like, well, I hope they all call out your sin as well. Well, yeah, I hope they do too, because <laughs> that's the whole point of of accountability. Is is the Christian church when we see one another slacking, whether it's just uh, a neglect of the spiritual disciplines of we're not spending time in prayer as we should, we're not spending time uh, studying the Word of God for a personal benefit. It's like Nick and I are both ministry students, which means that a lot of our time studying is spent in the Word. But we both know that we also need, outside of that, mm-hmm. active time reading and studying the Word of God for our own benefit. Right. And time outside of community groups, just praying and being alone with God. I know that's something that I struggle with. We both are, are busy, scheduled guys. But we need to be able to hold one another accountable to that. Realizing that it's not just nitpicking, that we're you know, pointing out the imperfections of one another, but rather that through that, through accountability as an expression of love, we're both driving one another to Christ independently. That the more that we hold ourselves and each other accountable to what Christ has called us to, the more likely we are to actually do it. You know, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to stay in unrepentant sin when the people that you love and care about are always confronting you and saying, listen, this sin is separating you from us, breaking our relationship, and it's separating you from God, that the mm-hmm. sin is causing a barrier in your spiritual relationships. Yeah. And so this part of Christian community is absolutely essential. We can't, if we truly love one another, just just gloss over the things that we're doing to hurt ourselves and others. We can't just overlook sin. Now, that doesn't mean we can't be gracious, because of course we should be, realizing that, Nick, you and I are both sinners. Yeah. Sometimes we may correct one another, and our correction's wrong. Maybe we've misread the situation. Maybe it's it's our own uh, thought process that's <laughs> that's off. If you know, um, maybe I'm I'm telling you, oh, you you probably phrased this wrong. You should have said it this way. When really it's I'm off, and it should be vice versa. But that's also part of this whole idea of accountability that that we as Christians must continually be seeking to shape one another into Christ likeness. That that we are part of the church. That the church body, the community of the church, is a gift to us as Christians for our sanctification, for our growing in holiness and into the likeness of Christ. Which means, uh, it means, like we said earlier, that iron sharpens iron. 
um, that we hold one another accountable. Um, and then, sorry, we skipped a point. <laughs> so <laughs> hold that off for a second. In the midst of confronting sin, we also want to realize that, as we've said before, we should be celebrating together, right? Yes. <laughs> so that when things do go well, we'll be able to say, good, let's remind ourselves of this, right? Like when you can say, yeah, I... I have not been struggling with this thing for so long. We can celebrate with each other, our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, look, like, look at this great work Christ has done in me. Mm-hmm. Not look at this thing that I have done myself because left to myself, I would just continue to sin over and over and fail and fall flat on my face every single time. Mm-hmm. But through the grace of God, through the Christian community that God has placed me in, God has done a beautiful work in my life and in Luke's life to bring about sanctification and i know that's a whole lifetime journey and a whole lifetime struggle um, but we're able to celebrate with one another in the victories yeah for sure and and living in extended community extended relationship with one another is a huge that's a huge benefit of it is that we get to see one another grow in the faith mm-hmm. that we get to see one another one another conquer sin and overcome these obstacles of our faith that you know the more that we press into one another and press one another towards christ the more that we see the road behind us so like in the what two and a half years that we've known each other huge strides have been made on both of us wouldn't you say absolutely yeah like, i know i came to this university like super edgy not knowing what i believed <laughs> about a lot of things like oh you know you just gotta love jesus and love people and blah, blah, blah. And like, yeah, love God, love people. Absolutely. But there's so much more to it than that. There's, mm-hmm. there's so much more to it. And like, honestly, I've learned a lot in my Bible classes, but through relationships with Luke, through other ministry students, just struggling and praying with one another and doing life together. Like I've learned not just these mental things. I haven't learned just what the scripture says, but like been able to live it out in Christian community with close friends and that's been a beautiful thing, being able to just grow and apply these things to my life. Mm-hmm. Which is why we want to be continually encouraging one another to be involved in Christian community. And why we uh, we don't want to just be two voices talking to another, but we want to be encouraging you, the listener, as well, to be involved in Christian community where you're at. We know that God has, we've talked about this, that God has given us the church and the mm-hmm. community that we're in for a purpose. That wherever you may be, whatever church you may be at, that God has you there for a reason. And there's a lot of different uh, factors that may go into that, where you're serving in church, how you're serving in church, what church you're serving mm-hmm. at. But just know that where you're at, wherever the Holy Spirit is leading you to be at this moment, wherever your, your conviction has allowed you to be, you're there for a reason that the community around you is the hands and feet of Christ in your life. And that as we serve one another, we're serving Christ. Um, And so we want just to encourage you to be at that, to be the iron that sharpens iron. Um, There's the point. There's the point. (laughs) So as, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And so we want to be continually doing this so that We're not stagnating in our faith, but that we're studying together, we're growing together, we're encouraging one another, we're pushing back on things. So, Nick, you and I have had disagreements about things, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But through (laughs) these past two and a half years, through even disagreements about faith and practice and theology, Mm -hmm. we've learned immensely that through this relational experience, we've grown as human beings, as, as people also as men, also as students, and also as disciples of Christ. And and even in the conflict, even in the difficulty, uh, even when sparks fly, that is the sharpening happening. Mm-hmm. We know that um, that uh, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And so our goal here is to continue to encourage you to get plugged into Christian community because because Christ has called you to it and he's given it to you for your good. Yeah. There's no such thing as this lone ranger Christianity. There's Mm -hmm. that idea of just, Oh, I can just read my Bible on my own and be fine. Or I can just go to online church and be fine. Or it's wet outside. So I don't want to drive to church. (laughs) Like whatever excuse you want to make, it's just like, stop trying to dance around the bush or stop trying to beat around the bush. I guess as the saying goes, Mm -hmm. like you're living in disobedience at that point. 
Mm-hmm. And, we, and that is a hard message to hear, but like we're saying that because we love you and because we care about you, that you need a Christian, you need a Christian community if you want to grow in your faith and if you want to live in obedience to what God is calling you to do. Amen. Yeah, and that's a great note to end on. So thank you so much, Nick, for being on. Hopefully we'll have you on again soon. We want you to be a regular contributor (laughs) here and some other people. Uh, Until next time, you can follow us on social media at City Anchor Pod on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, you can listen and subscribe on every podcast platform available. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever it may be. You can also leave us a rate and review on Facebook or iTunes. That helps out a lot. But until next time, love God, love the church, and love your neighbor as yourself. God bless. We'll see you next week. Bye.